In this video, I will be deriving the expression for the effective EMF of n non-identical cells which have been connected in parallel. See, for example, you have the first cell of EMF E1 and internal resistance R1, the second one of EMF E2, internal resistance R2 and so on up to n cells. This is the nth cell where n can be any integer of EMF, say En and internal resistance Rn and they are all connected in parallel so the if the current through the external resistance is i okay the current from the current comes out of the positive terminal of each cell they all add up so the current through the first cell is i1 second cell is i2 and so on up to nth cell is in all of them will add up to give the total current i which passes through the external resistance capital r so now our goal is to replace this bunch of cells which have been connected in parallel with a single cell and so we want to know what will be the EMF of that single cell and what would be its internal resistance. So let us see how we can derive its EMF. So first we start with Kirchhoff's first law so that we get a relation between the currents. So it is the junction rule. So sum of all the currents entering the junction should be equal to the current which leaves the junction. So I1, I2, I3, I4 and so on up to In, they all enter and come out as I. So that is the Kirchhoff's first law. So we are doing it for say 3 currents. We can always extrapolate it for n number of branches or n number of cells. So then since we have 4 unknowns, I1, I2, I3 and I, if you take it for 3 cells, we have 4 unknowns. So we need 4 equations to solve for it. So the first equation is the from Kirchhoff's first law we got. Remaining 3 equations we will get from Kirchhoff's second law or voltage loop rule. So we will apply it for the each loop. Each loop will give one equation. So the loop will be taken like this. We will start from D, go to C, go to B and then through the cell E1 and then to A and come back to the starting point here. That will be the first loop which will give us the equation number 2. The next loop would be again you start from say, uh, say A, D, C, B and then go through cell E2 and come back to A. The third loop would be through the third cell here like this. Like this. So like that for each cell we will get one loop and one equation. So we are doing it for three cells. We will extrapolate it for n number of cells. So let us see how the equation will be derived for each loop. So if I start from here, when I go in the direction of current, we know that current always flows from higher potential to lower potential through a resistor. So this end has to be a higher potential, this end has to be a lower potential. So the change in potential when a positive charge moves in this direction through a resistor is final potential minus initial potential. So final is lesser, initial is greater. So final minus initial would be negative number. So the change in potential when you go from here to here across this resistor in the direction of current would be negative. So the drop in potential is given as IR by Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. So the drop in potential across this resistor is what is the current through this resistor? It's I. And the resistance is external resistance capital R. So it's minus IR. Minus indicates that the potential decreases when you go in the direction of current. Then till here there is no resistance, so no change in potential. Then you go through this branch and then when you go across this resistor again you are going in the direction of current. So again there is a drop in potential. This time minus I1 small r1. You get this term. Now you go through the cell of EMF E1 and you go from negative to positive terminal. So negative terminal is at a lower potential, positive terminal is at a higher potential. So there is an increase in potential and the difference between these two terminals is E1. So the increase in potential is E1. So you write plus E1. And then here there is no resistance, you come back to the starting point. So now the total change across this closed loop, the change in potential across this closed loop is equal to 0 according to Kirchhoff's second law. So that is how you get this equation. From this 
you rearrange the terms and solve for i1 so you get take it to this side it will become positive so i1 r1 is equal to e1 minus ir from that i1 is equal to e1 minus ir by small r1 so if you look at the other branches they are all identical this branch is common for every loop so whatever change in potential happens you will get the same expression minus i times capital r and then this branch is also of same format you have instead of i1 i2 instead of r1 r2 instead of e1 e2 so the final result would be of the same format only the suffix will change so you'll get i2 is equal to e2 minus ir by r2 similarly for this branch also you will get the same format expression so now you got an expression for i1 i2 i3 so substitute them inside this equation so you will get the total current i is equal to this e1 minus ir by r1 and so on so now you uh, take out the terms e1 by r1 e2 by r2 e3 by r3 together and ir is common in all these terms so take it together so you will get minus ir into 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 so now you we want to isolate the expression for i so that later on we can apply ohm's law and find out the uh, effective emf so we are actually solving for the total current i which passes through the external resistor r so grouping the terms of i together you will take this to this left hand side so you will get i into this one is going to give you 1 plus r into 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 so that should be equal to this term this is left behind on the right hand side now we can use the fact that effective resistance of all the internal resistors which are connected in parallel we will calculate using this expression 1 by r is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 and so on so this term in this square bracket is actually 1 by r effective of all the internal resistances of the cells which are in parallel so i can replace it with 1 by r effective so that's what i'm doing here so here i brought this whole term to the denominator so i got this for n cells in parallel here i have written it for three cells for n cells it will become i'll use the summation symbol so add up all the expressions of ei by ri where i goes from 1 to n where i goes from 1 to n divided by 1 plus capital r into this whole expression is 1 by r effective so that's what i have written here 1 by r effective so then i do the algebra r effective into 1 plus capital r by r effective that will go to the numerator so it becomes summation ei r effective by 1 by r effective plus capital r clear this ri is present here this one is present here so now i can finally use ohm's law for the effect for the whole circuit where the bunch of resistors in parallel have been replaced with r effective a single resistor of r effective that would be in series with capital r c this whole bunch of cells contain internal resistance r1 r2 and so on up to rn i can replace all those resistors with a single resistance of small r effective that is in series with capital r so the total resistance of this circuit is small r effective plus capital r so that's what i am using here so effective emf would be i into total effective resistance of the circuit so for i i write this expression summation ei r effective by ri into r effective plus r and the total effective resistance is the effective resistance of all the cells plus external resistance so these two terms will cancel out giving me this final expression so the way we interpret this final result is the effective emf of all the cells when they are connected in parallel is the sum of 
the EMFs of all the cells in such a way that you take only a fraction of the EMF of each cell. See here, each cell has a different EMF and R effective is the effective resistance of all the internal resistance of all the cells and since they are in parallel this R effective will be less than the less than the smallest resistance which is in uh, connected in parallel so R effective is always less than Ri that means R effective by Ri is a fraction which has to be less than 1 in every case no matter what is the value of I which resistor you, which cell you are taking this fraction is less than 1 so that fraction which is less than 1 is multiplied with the with each EMF of the cell so for each cell you get a fraction of its EMF and you are adding it all up to get the total effective EMF so thus effective EMF of a combination of different cells in parallel is the sum of some fraction of EMF of each cell. So this is the result we have derived.